I am Warren Booth, Product Manager here at Newport Corporation for Vibration Control. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our new S2000 vibration isolators, our stabilizers. As you can see on the table, there's four or five different versions of an isolator in different heights and different colors. So first of all, we have our standard shorter height isolator, that's our standard S2000. We have this white isolator, which is our standard S2000, but cleaned and painted for clean room applications. And we have this gray isolator here. That's our S2000 stabilizer, non-magnetic version. That's constructed on the inside of all 316 stainless steel, which makes it significantly less magnetic than any other isolator on the market. And the outside of all these isolators is constructed of aluminum. So they're very non-magnetic in this case. Then we have yet another version, the same isolator top, but the bottom has flanges welded to it to use tie bars and casters. And this allows you to make your table setup mobile. And we have a standard version here that's at a little bit different height than the other versions because this isolator family, whether it's a clean room, non-magnetic, tie bar and caster, or standard isolator, comes in height ranging from 10 inches all the way up to 28 inches. Okay, what you're looking at now is a sample of our test report done by an independent company, Brule and Care, testing the performance specifications of our S2000 stabilizer versus competitive models. On this chart, you'll notice a few things. There's four different lines on the chart. There's the green line, solid line, representing Newport's isolator. A dotted line representing Newport's isolator with a different load. A red line and an orange line representing two different competitive models. So you'll notice that all of these different lines have a peak. That peak's called the isolator's resonant frequency. And the goal of an isolator is to get the resonant frequency as low as possible. You can see the solid green line has a resonance peak just about 1 hertz. The other isolators are more toward 1.6 to 1.7 hertz, meaning that they can only isolate down to that frequency. So in this case, verified by this independent test company, Newport Stabilizer had a 1 hertz resonance, making it a better performing isolator as far as resonant frequency goes than the competitive models. Another specification that you can get from looking at a compliance curve is how fast does this attenuate vibrations? So if we take 10 hertz as an example and we look at the green curve, you can see for transmissibility going over to the right, Newport is 0 0.01, meaning we've attenuated the vibration level by almost 100%, just under 99%. These other isolators are higher up, they're closer to 0.1, and it's more on the order of 95%. So the Newport isolator attenuates the vibrations significantly quicker than the competitive models. So those are two pieces of information you want to look at on an isolator. What's the resonant frequency, and how fast does that roll off and provide damping? Okay. In the previous section, we talked about isolator performance and how the features inside the isolator relate to performance. Now I'm going to, going to talk about differences between our Newport Stabilizer hybrid isolator and competitive model isolators. I have a, the cross sections of both of them and I'll start from the top down and work my way through the isolators. The first thing you see is our isolator has a height adjustment of about one and a half inches and that's to correct for uneven floors. Competitive models from the top to the bottom have no height adjustment whatsoever. So if your floor is crooked or uneven, your isolator is tipped. Or if your floor is higher on the left side or, or the right side, your isolators are at differing heights. So they can't be, you can never get your table level. Another feature is we have this big platform on top that's used to use our safe lock clips to bolt the table to the isolator. In this model, none of that exists. This piece here is what the table rests on, this small area right here. Makes it easy to slide. 
If we go down inside the isolator, this is the small compliance chamber, or what gives the isolator its natural frequency. Um, the smaller the chamber, the higher the resonant frequency. The larger the chamber, the lower the frequency. In the Newport stabilizer, the chamber is this area inside here, plus this whole area here. So our resonant frequency is about one hertz. The resonant frequency to this isolator is about 1.6 to 1.8 hertz, depending on the load on top of it. Um, moving down a little bit farther to the bottom of this compliance chamber, this is one of our laminar flow disks. There's four of these in here, so there's about four to five square inches of area that when the table is disturbed and pushed down, air flows through this disk. This disk acts like a damper to damp out the amplitude and the vibration that the table sees. In this isolator, the competitive model, there's a tiny hole. The top is about a millimeter in diameter. And when the table's disturbed, air has to force itself through this little hole to minimize the, the vibration. And it's not as effective as this larger hole because the airflow isn't at the same speed. And you don't get as much damping. This isolator has three metal cables hanging down. And they act like a pendulum to provide horizontal isolation so when the table's rocked back and forth, these wires act as a pendulum to isolate the table from that, that motion. The competitive model has some plastic, rubber, and metal pieces laminated together that's fairly stiff. It takes a lot of force for me to move these sideways. And when the table's floating and a horizontal vibration comes in, since this is so stiff, it can actually cross-couple and turn horizontal vibration into vertical vibration. Um, that's what you don't want. Another feature here is this top ring has a beveled edge. And this ring down inside the isolator has a beveled angled edge. The top ring rests against this guide ring on the, on the outside of the isolator to center the isolator when you put a load on it. So as you put the load on it, the table's not crooked and your isolator's pointing straight up. These isolators don't have anything self-centering. So the, when the table's set here, it could already be the isolator piston can be offset to the side, touching the sidewall, and you'd never know your isolation isn't working. So this is an ease of setup feature that we have in our isolator. There's also four indentations, or, or there's four grooves or bumps on the outside ring here around the isolator, and there would be one in the front. In the center of this ring, or the point, is used to line up with the top of this, this indicator on the outside to tell if you're floating at the right height or if your table has enough air in it to get optimal performance. Too high up, the center groove is above this indicator. Too low, the groove is clearly below this indicator. And when it's just right, the groove lines up with the indicator. On the competitive model, too low, you don't really know. The table's resting. It may or may not be resting on this top piece. Too high, well, you don't know because there's no indication. And you can't see down inside here to decide if it's too high or too low. So it's hard to know that you're be a, it's hard to be 100% sure that the table is floating at the proper height. One other feature that Newport isolators have that this competitive model doesn't is this is a solid steel welded tube. If you buy this height today, that's the height you're going to live with tomorrow. On the Newport isolator, this top piece here is the isolator. This bottom piece is a spacer to provide the working surface that you need. This spacer can be changed out in the field by a customer to make it higher or lower, depending on what their needs are. So in summary, those are the differences between the isolators. And this is why the Newport isolator provides better performance. and is.